An appeal to popular belief says that an argument is good or bad, or a claim is true or false because it is widely believed to be so. An appeal to popular practice is similar, except we're dealing not with beliefs but with practices, things you do like giving to charity or spanking your kids. Here's an example. As tax season approaches, you might hear the expression, well, everyone lies on their taxes. So if our unscrupulous Jason says, yeah, there was some income that I didn't declare on my taxes, but look, everyone lies on their taxes. This would be an appeal to common or popular practice. Putting the argument in standard form and adding the key premise, it looks like this. The key premise is the first one. This is the premise that asserts that if everyone or almost everyone does something, then it's acceptable to do it. Appeals to popular belief or popular practice are fallacies if that first major premise is false or dubious. The logic works fine, it's the truth of the premises that is at issue. In this case, I think most of us would agree that even if everyone did lie on their taxes, that by itself wouldn't justify lying on your taxes. Would we want to say that if everyone stole things that didn't belong to them, then stealing would be okay? Or if everyone, or the majority, believed that slavery was acceptable, then slavery would be acceptable? Here's an example of appeal to popular belief. Surveys tell us that over 90% of the population believes in some form of God or higher power. Surely we can't all be wrong. This is an appeal to popular belief rather than popular practice because the issue is whether a claim is true or false, not whether a practice is acceptable or unacceptable. In standard form, the argument might look like this. Here I've written the key premise as a statement form with X as a placeholder for whatever claim is at issue. Every appeal to popular belief relies on a premise of this or similar form, whether it's explicitly stated or not. Once again, the point to note is that the logic isn't the problem with an argument like this. The problem is with the truth or falsity of the premises. That's what makes it a content fallacy rather than a logical fallacy. Now let's assume the second premise is true. In this case, the argument is fallacious just in case that first major premise is false. And in most cases where the climate issue makes an assertion about what exists or doesn't exist objectively in the world, this premise is going to be false. Simply believing that something exists doesn't make it exist. On the other hand, sometimes the climate issue is about what people believe, like this example. Vanilla is the most popular flavor of ice cream in the world. If this is true, it's true simply in virtue of the fact that more people prefer vanilla to any other flavor of ice cream. So the appeal to popular belief is relevant because what's at issue is precisely what people believe or prefer. So if you surveyed people and found out that this was the case, then of course you wouldn't be guilty of this fallacy. On the other hand, there's obviously another sense in which whether or not vanilla is the most popular ice cream isn't determined solely by popular belief about the issue. If you just ask people what they think the most popular ice cream is and the majority says chocolate, that doesn't by itself make chocolate the most popular ice cream, since the majority could easily be mistaken about what the actual preferences of people are. It's possible that, in fact, more people prefer vanilla to chocolate, but more people think that chocolate is the more popular flavor. We're not being contradictory here because we're saying two very different things. In the first case, we're saying that if more people actually prefer vanilla to any other flavor of ice cream, then vanilla really is the most popular flavor, since this is what it means for it to be the most popular. And this is clearly true, so there's no fallacy here. In the second case, we're saying that if more people believe that vanilla is the most popular ice cream, then vanilla really is the most popular ice cream. But this is clearly false. An argument that relied on this kind of premise would be guilty of a fallacious appeal to popular belief. So to sum up, appeals to popular belief or popular practice generally rely on major premises like these, whether they are stated explicitly or not. These arguments are fallacious when the major premise is judged to be false or dubious.